Hi. Welcome to the Prairie Oaks Pulpit Bible Study. And we're looking in 2 Chronicles, kind of changing things up here a little bit. And we're watching in 2 Chronicles for places where God was at work to bring revival. So we're going to look in 2 Chronicles, and we're going to look in chapters 14 and 15. Uh, we're really working our way towards Jehoshaphat, but I wanted to set the stage with his father, Asa. Now, this would be after David, after Solomon, and then, you know, after Solomon, the, the nation split in two. Uh, there was the northern tribes, and they went the wrong way, and there was the southern tribes, and they went the wrong way oftentimes too. But they continue to have a king of the line of David and Solomon and so on. And Asa is one of those. And so we're told in chapter 14 that um, Asa did what was right, did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. He removed altars of foreign gods and the high places. He uh, did away with a lot of the pagan worship. And, uh, and he also then began to make some uh, improvements militarily. Um, and yet even that wasn't enough because there would be this army that would come and it was huge. It overwhelmed them. And Asa cried out to the Lord his God. This is verse 11 of chapter 14. Asa cried out to the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing for you to help, whether with many or with those who have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on you, and in your name we go against this multitude, O Lord. You are our God. Do not let man prevail against you. And so the Lord struck this invading army and gave uh, the kingdom of Judah victory, gave Asa victory, and they were very thankful and so we see in chapter 15, this is where I was going. So, Second Chronicles, chapter 15. Now the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa after this spectacular victory and said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. For a long time, Israel has been without the true God, without a teaching priest, and without law. But when in their trouble they turned to the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found by them. And in those times there was no peace to the one who went out, nor to the one who came in, but great turmoil was on all the inhabitants of the lands. So nation was destroyed by nation and city by city, for God troubled them with every adversity. But you be strong and do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. And so we want to look at this message from the prophet to Asa. They have been rescued. So what is the proper response? He says, well, if God is with you, stay with him. The Lord is with you. Well, you were with him. You were the ones that separated yourselves from him. Asa's father, um, he had some highlights, but he also had a lot of, of lowlights. And he, the book of Kings doesn't paint him in a very good picture. Chronicles is a little kinder to him. But in the end, they needed some improvement. And Asa is an improvement over that. And so, if you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, it's going to feel like he's forsaken you. He's going to leave you to the consequences of your sin, uh, the prophet warns these people. And so there's a, a major principle going on here. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Turn towards him with your heart. And 
see where the Lord is working and draw closer to him. But one thing we saw last week when we were going through Hebrews chapter 12 is that the Lord does discipline those he loves. And it won't be pleasant, but it's for our good if we'll just repent and turn towards him. And for a long time, it says there in 15, chapter 15, verse 3, for a long time, Israel had been without the true God. They were worshiping false gods. They had decided to chase after other things than the one true God. They were without a teaching priest. It was the descendants of Aaron, and it was their job to teach others to follow the Lord, to know how to do that. The sacrifices, the, the principles of holiness, what God expects of us towards one another, all those things, because they were without law. They were just lawless, doing whatever. What did it say in the book of Judges? Each one did what was right in his own eyes. And that was a disaster. And that's what was going on again. But one thing that we also saw from the book of Judges we see again in verse 4 of chapter 15. But when in their trouble they turned to the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found by them. So they wouldn't even get their whole act together if they just turned and looked to him. If they just said, oh, Lord, we need your help, they would find that he would. And that's what had taken place there in verse 11. Asa cried out to the Lord his God and said, Lord, it's nothing for you to help. It's not a big deal. You can do anything, whether you have a lot of humans or no one to help you. You are our help, O Lord. Just help us. We rest on you. And we represent your name, your character, your people. We go out against unnumbered, unnumbered foes. Outmatched. You are our God. Do not let man prevail against you. Human to human, Judah didn't have a chance against their enemies. But against God, nobody has a chance against God. So he was crying out to the one who could rescue him. And he did. And that's what the prophet is reminding him. He said, okay. You knew you were in trouble. You cried out to God and you found that he answered. Don't squander this opportunity. The Lord can work among other nations and keep them away from you if you will just trust him. Be strong. Be strong in the things of God. Do not let your hands be weak. Be diligent to do what you can. And your work will be rewarded. Your work will be rewarded. And so verse 8 tells us, And when Asa heard these words and the prophet of Oded the prophet, he took courage and removed the abominable idols from the land of Judah and Benjamin and from the cities which he'd taken from the mountains of Ephraim, restored the altar of the Lord that was before the vestibule of the Lord, gathered all Judah and Benjamin and those who dwelt with them from Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon, for they came over to him in great numbers from Israel when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. Everyone who wanted to follow the Lord wanted to be with him because they saw that he was going to do that. So God grew the nation just from having other godly people come join them. So he took what the prophet said to heart and said, okay, well then let's seek the Lord even more so. Let's get rid of the things that are reprehensible to God. And so it says that they did all those things and they continue to seek after God. He even, it says in verse 16, got rid of uh, the queen mother because she was uh, worshiping idols. She was worshiping things that were obscene and he destroyed that. And he brought into the house of God the things dedicated to the Lord, gold, silver, and he enjoyed peace. 
while the neighbors were all fighting amongst themselves, he had peace. Because that was how God was going to provide peace. But as Asa got older, years and years and years passed, he forgot how God had provided in the past. Which is one of the reasons we're going to do this series, is that we need reminders that God has provided deliverance in the past. And started doing things the way the neighbors did things. Which didn't work for them. I don't know why he would have thought it would work for him. But then it's easy for us to think. Well, we'll just do what everyone else is doing. But it's not working for them. Not in eternity. It won't work for us either. We need to do things God's way. And that's why we're wrapping up here with verse 9 of chapter 16. So he compromised. He made an alliance with ungodly people to try to get his way. Instead of trusting God, he trusted in princes and neighbors and things like that. And the prophet came to him in Second Chronicles 16, chapter 16, verse 7. And at that time, Hanani the seer came to Asa, king of Judah. And said to him, Because you relied on the king of Syria and have not relied on the Lord your God, therefore the army of the king of Syria has escaped from your hand. Were the Ethiopians and the Lubim not a huge army with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. In verse 9, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. And this you've done foolishly. Therefore, from now on, you shall have wars. Asa, you trusted in the Lord in the past, and he delivered in a mighty way. Because that's what the Lord wants. He's looking. His eyes run to and fro. He's looking, searching for opportunities anywhere on the globe to show himself strong in the behalf of those whose hearts are loyal, looking towards him, faithful to him. And Asa, you dropped the ball. And Asa was rebuked for this. He could have repented. He'd responded well when the prophets came to him in the past. And verse 10 tells us that he just got angry, put the prophet in the prison, and he oppressed, became even more oppressive. And shortly thereafter, he died painful death. And so it's a sad story of Asa not trusting the Lord. He'd done so well in the beginning and then drifted away. And so we see that the revival started and petered out. Could the revival fires be rekindled? Well, next week we're going to look at Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. He builds on his father's positive legacy and undoes the negative that his father had done. And so we'll see some of that next time. But in the meantime, remember, the Lord is looking for people to be faithful to him, who put him first, give him priority, because he wants to show himself strong in their behalf. Will we remain faithful in turning against sin, turning against the gods of this world, and instead turn towards heaven and the true God and his Son, Jesus Christ, our example and our sacrifice. God bless. See you next time.